Hi guys, thanks for stopping by this video to check out the way I set up my Wales weeklies in my bullet journal. Before we get started, I do want to get the choices for next month's country, which will be chosen from these jars. So this one here is the populations above 30 million, so the big guys. Let's see what we pull out. And we have, we have one, we have one, we have Turkey. That would be very interesting to learn about. And then we've got the medium sized countries, so between 8 million and 30 million. And then my rings just attack the glass every time. We have Greece. Oh, I would love to go to Greece. I'd love to explore Greece. Wouldn't you? Yeah. Uh, anyway, and the third one is these are the countries beneath 8 million in population. <gasps> what is it? Du -du -du -du. Bosnia and Herzegovina. I don't know if I pronounced that right. So we'll just say Bosnia for now. It's a long, long word. That would be awesome though. I would love to explore Bosnia as well. These are awesome choices. I'm super stoked. So we have Turkey, Greece and Bosnia. So if you want to see one of those for next month's setup, just leave me a comment down below with which one you want to see and then get your friends in and you know, more votes for the one that you want to see the most. So yeah, um, thank you for voting. I look forward to hearing what you guys choose and and now let's get on with the video. So we started with our exploration of Wales last week in my setup video. If you missed that one, feel free to check it out in the description box down below. There should be a link. And now I'm going to get on to my remaining four weeks of the month of June. So I've been wanting to try something that I thought of a little while back, maybe a few months ago, and I've been wanting to include it in my bullet journal setups, but I could never find the exact um, sort of way to include it. And I really wanted to try my hand at painting on paint samples. So I went to my local hardware store, which is called Bunnings here in Australia, and you can grab a bunch of paint samples all for free. My kids adore doing it. They're allowed to get three to five each time we go. Um, and then one day when they were collecting some, I thought I'd collect some for myself, for my art projects. So on one particular journey, I ended up choosing a very nice sky blue, really pastel, and I just love the color itself. And I was waiting for an opportunity to paint on it. Um, and I found it this month with my Welsh little puffin illustration. So this little guy is an Atlantic puffin. Now, although he is not solely in Wales on this island, he is found in other places like Norway and Iceland and even Nova Scotia in Canada. So there's lots of places you can find this bird, but I think from what I read, there's a very, very large population of them on Skoma Island. So it's definitely a place to visit if you're in Wales and the chance to see these um, these beautiful little birds. I think they're just the most interesting bird. Like I'm not really much of a bird person, but I really love the little puffin. So when I saw some imagery of them being high up on the tourist lists of things to see when in Wales, I just felt like I had to draw him. I had to paint him. Um, so yeah, I was just excited to do this technique of using my gouache on directly onto the paint samples. And so what I did is I had that blue one in the background. I sketched on the bird first and then tore a piece of another green paint sample to sort of represent the, the grass of the island beneath it. And then just went in with my gouache. And it was so relaxing to do this little painting. Um, it's kind of nice having the background done for you already. And then you can just focus your attention on the subject. So I really enjoyed the process of creating this page and I'm happy with how it turned out as well. So it's nice to have a bit of color to introduce the weeklies this time. I've just added some little daisies into the foreground of that grass section just to add some interest. And then for even more, I have gone ahead and used some washi tape down the sides of my pages. And this is just, I chose something that had a nice green in it um, that would like kind of tie into the painting itself. And I just love the little splash of gold in it. I'm obsessed with gold and I just love including it wherever I can in my setups. Um, so yeah, this one I think made the page stand out a little bit nicer by adding that kind of border of greens and golds. And then I'm just adding in my days of the week and this is going to be my first weekly spread or actually my second weekly spread for the month of June.
Okay, and now we're moving on to the next weekly spread. And this illustration, I decided to do a little scene from Bodnant Garden. Now, Bodnant Garden has been around, it was founded in 1874, um, and it was developed by five generations of that same family. And then in 1949, it was gifted to the National Trust. And so since 1874, it has been impeccably kept up and beautifully done all these plants and flowers all across 80 acres of um, gardens and there's this cute little building which they call the pin mill and lily pond so i've drawn that part of it but honestly the photos from this place look stunning and the flowers are just incredible there they've got lots of different species from all over the world and yeah it just looks really beautiful to see it was visited by over 270,000 people in 2019 and its famous site there is something called the Laburnum Arch, which is basically the longest archway in the UK that's full of laburnum flowers and they flower in May and June. So if you're going to go visit it, that might be the best time to go, uh, probably the busiest, but it will probably look the most beautiful. So yeah, this place looks awesome and I loved this little building. So I thought I would draw that in because I do like to do some buildings in my weeklies. I like to try and keep my weekly simple with the black fine liner and just gold, but I have been adding a little bit of color here and there um, when I just feel a little bit bored. <laughs> and this time I was, yeah, not loving just the plain colors because I mean, it's a garden. You need to have some life in there, some color. So I did end up using a little bit of washi tape in the lily pads in the foreground and the grass surrounding the lake just to add a little something extra. Um, and yeah, and then otherwise I just use my Pigma Micron and my gold, my gold metallic pen, which I adore. I also read that the pin mill building, the one that I've just drawn here, was actually added to the garden in 1938, but it was originally built in 1730 in Gloucestershire. Then it was brought back and rebuilt here at the Bodnant Garden by the third generation of caretakers for this garden. So I found that pretty interesting that they didn't just build something new, they actually yeah, saved it from decay somewhere else and rebuilt it and gave it a whole new life here. So this next page, I decided to draw a very beautiful picture that I found, which is the South Stack Lighthouse. And this is in Anglesey, on the island of Anglesey, I should say. I just feel like I do tend to see imagery of lighthouses when thinking of Wales. Um, I guess it's the amount of coastline they have and those rugged cliffs that the lighthouse, like the purpose of this lighthouse is to um, warn ships out into sea that there's these harsh rocks down below. So that is the point of them. And there's about 20 lighthouses across Wales or around Wales as well. So I just really wanted to draw this in this page. I did want to also include a word on this page, which is a place name in Wales. Um, if you remember back on my New Zealand setup, I actually had on one of the pages um, a little ribbon from the Kiwi's mouth saying the longest place name in the world is in New Zealand. Well, the second longest place name in the world is in Wales. And it is literally impossible for me to pronounce. I did try. I had a look at some YouTube videos. I tried to figure out how to do it, but the sounds that the Welsh um, language has, I can't even make. So I'm not even gonna attempt it, um, but I'll put it on screen so you can see it. Um, I can say the very last bit, which is Silio Gogok, I think. Um, and yeah, so this was interesting to me. And yeah, I can definitely see how difficult the Welsh language would be for other people to learn and understand. Um, so yeah, props to them for being able to speak like that. I will say, however, that the town name itself actually means the Church of St. Mary in the hollow of white hazel trees near the rapid whirlpool by St. Decilios of the Red Cave. So a very detailed meaning and a lot of the locals just shortened the name of this town to Landfair, I think. Um, so yes, I thought I would just mention that here that I did want to include it somehow, but I didn't get around to it. And as you can see, I'm using just my Pigma Micron, my gold pen in this one, and then that same washi tape 
with those little hints of green and gold through it. And then I've also been using a Faber-Castell marker throughout this setup in a really, really pale blue. And that's just tying in those few colors that I've been using through the weekly setup. So the palette is all very consistent and I quite like that. I quite like keeping the weeklies all in one sort of um, range of colors. And I say that, but now I'm actually going to draw with markers in this next one in all sorts of colors. <laughs> So now I'm onto the final weekly page and because there's only three days in this final week of June, I wanted to use the full page as an opportunity to draw something, you know, on the full, full page. So I thought I would try and um, show you a really great spot in Wales that you can go and visit called Port Mirian. And this is a village that is made to look like an Italian village. So it's all beautiful, bright colored buildings and lots of um, gardens and greenery. And the majority of the buildings there are used as either hotels or self-catered cottages. And there's shops and cafes and restaurants and it's a big tourist attraction and it's had a lot of famous people connected with the site, including the Beatles and their manager were frequent users of the village itself. And it's been the inspiration to a lot of movies and writers and directors and things like that. So it's a very, very cool place to go. It's definitely on the bucket list when I get to Wales. Um, but I found this beautiful shot of it sort of, there's so many beautiful photos, so I'll put a few on screen, but um, I just wanted to do something that showed the environment and the surroundings. And I just, when I think of Wales, it's obviously all the landscape and the scenery. So I kind of wanted to include that in the picture. So I found an image where only part of the bright buildings were shown and then just all this beautiful landscape in the background. So I felt like doing this in a different kind of way. I didn't want to do my um, black outlines because I just felt like it would look really bland without any color pop in there. So I have been just itching to use my alcohol markers recently and I thought this is a good opportunity. So on a separate piece of paper on marker paper, I have sketched out my base for the drawing and then I'm just using the alcohol markers to sketch um, to color it all in and I really like how it turned out I don't have the exact colors that I needed but I was able to mix together a few and that's what I love about alcohol markers too because it's all about um, you can really build the colors and change them with whatever marker you lay on top and um, so yeah I just tried my best to create the right kind of colors and yeah tried to capture that feeling of a Mediterranean village in the middle of Wales <laughs> so I really enjoyed doing this um, particular drawing just because yeah I've been really wanting to use my markers lately but I don't get the chance to because alcohol markers are just impossible in bullet journals and if they're not on proper marker paper they do just bleed through like crazy um, so yeah it was nice to have a reason to use them on the side and just get a little bit of practice in there and yeah I'm really happy with how it turned out so I hope to use more in the future of markers um, these ones I'm using are hoo-hoo ones and I'm definitely keen to grab the brush marker set I've only got the bullet and the chisel nib on mine but I really would like to try the brush markers because yeah they just obviously brush brush markers tend to blend a lot easier and you can really I don't know just get softer softer effects from them I find that the bullet and the chisel just give you sharp lines where it'd be nice to feather things out with a brush tip so one day I will purchase those and I look forward to that day <laughs> um, and speaking of this beautiful scenery I've also decided on the prompt word that I'll be using for my art on cue piece which is or a draw with me piece which will be coming live next week. I've decided to go for something that came up a few times on the suggestions in my community post that I put out and that is lush. The word lush. It is something I've always associated with Wales personally just because I knew somebody from Wales who used it a lot and since then a lot of you have commented that lush is a very Welsh term that is used a lot and why not because it is literally the, the place, the surroundings is completely lush with beautiful scenery. So I thought that would be the perfect word to use as my inspiration for my art piece next week. Um, so yeah, if you wanna check that out, don't forget to subscribe to the channel for that. 
And here's a look at the four pages we did today for the remaining weeks of my month of June. And I have also finished this journal. So I have done six months in this journal and I'm about to start a new one. So that's always an exciting time, starting a fresh piece of stationery. Um, so I'll be setting that up in the coming weeks. So look forward to that video if you're interested in seeing the setup of how I do it. And I do hope you enjoyed this video and hearing a little bit more about Wales. And as of July, we need a new country. So don't forget to leave your votes for whichever country you would like to see down in the description box. And I look forward to hearing from you. Thanks guys for watching and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye.